Hi, this screencast is the first of three on a mathematical process called dimensional analysis. So this is going to be um, about a way that we solve problems and how we set up units so that they cancel each other out um, to convert from one unit to another. So to do these problems, we need to use something called a conversion factor. A conversion factor is a ratio that is derived from the equality between two different units that can be used to convert from one unit to another. So the important key here is that the two units represent the same amount. So for example, four quarters equals one dollar. So I can have four quarters over one dollar is the same amount, or I can have one dollar over four quarters. They're the same amount either way. We're talking about a dollar. There's just a lot of different ways that we can get there. Dimensional analysis is a mathematical technique that allows you to use units to solve problems that involve measurements. So in general, what you do is you take the quantity that you are looking for, and you set that equal to the quantity that you are given, and then you multiply it by a conversion factor, or sometimes more than one, to get an answer. For example, if I was trying to find out the number of quarters in $12, I would be looking for the number of quarters, and I would take my $12, which is my given amount, times a conversion factor. So I would take $12 times 4 quarters over $1. I use this fraction because I want dollars to cancel out. So if dollars starts on the top of the very first um, unit of what we're given, then I need dollars to be the unit on the bottom of my next fraction so it can cancel out. So once dollars cancels out here and here, then I can solve my math problem. So I'm taking 12 times 4, and that gives me 48 quarters. You can derive conversion factors if you know the relationship between the unit you have and the unit you want. So for example, we can look at conversion factors for meters and decimeters. We know that one meter is equal to 10 decimeters. We also know that 10 decimeters is equal to one meter. So we can use the conversion factor in any format that we need to. Metric conversion factors that you will need to know are the ones for centi, milli and kilo. So if you are not familiar with these conversion factors, at this point you should pause the video and make sure that you copy these down into your notes. So let's take a look at some sample problems. For our first problem, I'd like you to try to express a mass of 5.712 grams in milligrams and in kilograms. So we're actually doing two problems here. We can look at our word problem and we know that we're given 5.712 grams and our unknown is mass in milligrams and mass in kilograms. So we know we're going to need these metric conversion factors. 1,000 milligrams equals 1 gram and 1,000 grams equals 1 kilogram. Let's approach these problems individually. So first, we're going to try to convert to milligrams. When I look at my conversion factor, 1,000 milligrams equals 1 gram. I can express that in a fraction as 1,000 milligrams over 1 gram or as 1 gram over 1,000 milligrams. I know I'm looking for milligrams, and I was given 5.712 grams to start with. So which of these two fractions do I want so that my grams will cancel out? I want to use 1,000 milligrams divided by 1 gram. That allows me to cancel out my unit grams. And then to solve the problem, I'll take 5.712 times 1,000, and I get 5,712 milligrams. Make sure when you solve these problems that your answer includes the unit. A complete answer includes the number and the unit. Let's look at the next part of our conversion problem, which is converting to kilograms. Um, so, sorry, this should say kilograms, not milligrams. I want to know how many kilograms equals 5.712 grams. So, um, I can express my conversion factor 1,000 grams equals 1 kilogram as 1,000 grams over 1 kilogram or as 1 kilogram over 1,000 grams. Which one am I going to use? That's right, I'm going to use 1,000 grams on the bottom and 1 kilogram on the top. So that lets me cancel out grams, 
And now to solve my problem, I'm going to take 5.712 divided by 1,000, and I get 0.005712 kilograms. We can also do non-metric based examples. So for example, some insane workout fanatics want to run marathons. They have marathons listed at 26.2 miles and 35 k's, which is shorter. To solve this problem, I need to know that one kilometer is equal to 0.625 miles. So I'm gonna pick one of the factors, 26.2 miles, or 35 kilometers as my given, and I'm gonna compare the answer to my problem with the other factor. So, I'm either going to take 35 kilometers times 0.625 miles over one kilometer, which gives me 21.9 miles, or I'm going to do 26.2 miles times one kilometer over 0.625 miles equals 41.9 kilometers. Now I need to compare my answers with what I was given in the problem. So a 35 kilometer race is 21.9 miles, and that's less than the 26.2 miles of some marathons. I could also compare my answer of 41.9 kilometers with the 35 kilometers. So 41.9 kilometers or 26.2 miles is longer than 35 kilometers or 21.9 miles. So if I was to pick the shorter race, I would want to be running in the um, 35 kilometer race. Please pause the video and copy down these practice problems. I'd like you to add these practice problems to the end of your notes. Please note that in number five, how many seconds old are you today? This problem will require more than one step. If you need some help with that, please watch the simple conversion screencast that Mrs. Stoops made and is also included in today's notes. This will help you with the problem. Write any questions that you have down on your notes and make sure you ask Mrs. Benke when you're in class if you need help.